Oh, hey guys. Want to watch me draw something? Hello, everyone. It's been a while since I've been able to really focus on a video. As you could probably tell, this was supposed to be a Halloween video since there is a zombie bear. <laughs> so why didn't I finish this video for Halloween? Well, I was super busy. I was in school at the time, and while I was able to completely finish filming the video, I was not able to start editing. And by the time that I did get to start editing, the video would not be finished in time for Halloween, which really discouraged me. So I've kind of just been sitting on it for a while. Not sure if I should go ahead and upload it or wait until next Halloween. Obviously, we know which choice I made. That being said, my schedule has become even more congested than it previously was. Last year, I was going through school, which wasn't too bad since it was online and I could work on things while in class if I needed. Uh, this year, I started a job that is farther away than what I'm used to, and ever since I started there, I have been struggling to find time to even think of videos that I want to make. Which sucks. I want to make videos, and I even had a New Year's resolution to upload at least one new video a month, but it hasn't gone too well so far since my first upload is in March. However, Looking on the bright side, I am focusing more of my free time on filming and editing videos, which has gone pretty well so far. Aside from this video, there are two others that I'm currently editing as well, so hopefully you will see those very soon. Enough rambling, let's focus on this illustration. When I first planned on inking this piece, I wanted bold black lines like a coloring book. However, once I finished the sketch, I wanted to really try and make everything as colorful as possible with little to no black. Mainly, it was the burger that convinced me to try this because I wanted the bun to be really shiny. I feel like this was the right choice. The colors are nice and vibrant, and I feel like it's something new that I don't do too often. There are some areas where I may have put way too many colors in the line art, like the stomach and the brain of the zombie. Uh, but it doesn't ruin it too much. Alright, the burger is absolutely my favorite part of this picture. It's not even a Halloween thing, but it's so cute. I love the colors, and I made sure to make him look good. I think I'm going to draw him again on his own with uh, fries, a drink, and a milkshake. I think that'll be cute. Speaking of a bear Happy Meal... When I first drew this, there wasn't going to be a pumpkin. I drew the zombie and then the burger, and then after that I tried to make the zombie hold a milkshake, and he was going to have like the fries and ketchup packets all around him, but there wasn't really a way that I could do it and it look good. So I decided to scrap that and just put a pumpkin there and make it more of a Halloween picture. My main inspiration when doing the colored line art was Lisa Frank. If you don't know who Lisa Frank is, she's the creator of an early 2000s middle school trend that was on every girl's notepad, notebook, sticker book, etc, etc. Lisa Frank's style is known for very bright and obnoxious colors and a composition that completely fills the page with this, that, and the other. There's also every bit of the rainbow in those illustrations, which I always kind of liked. I'm not making my illustration obnoxious, hopefully, but I used the idea when doing most of the coloring for this piece. And look at that. The line art on its own is so cool to look at. The color isn't on the page, but it is colored. It just has such a cool effect, and I think it really makes a cool picture on its own. I'll definitely be doing this again. For illustrations where I primarily use colored pencils, I like to lay down a base with a marker. 
I do this because colored pencils have a lot of texture, and without a base, you would see the white of the page through that texture. I could avoid that by pressing heavily with a colored pencil, but I don't always want to do that because that's not the look that I'm always going for. I used the lightest green that I could so that the color wouldn't take over any of the pencils that I plan on using. I didn't really know how I was going to tackle coloring everything, so I started by coloring the foot. I figured if I messed up it wouldn't really be noticed since it's kind of out of the way anyway. There's nothing more heartbreaking than making a mistake right in the center of the art piece. While I was happy with how I approached the first foot, I did hit the second a little darker than I would have liked to, so I went back to the first foot to match them. You're probably wondering why I didn't film myself actually sketching the picture, and that's because my sketch process is very trial and error. I already mentioned that I changed things around with the pumpkin. Um, that and something about having people or a camera watch me while I sketch makes me kind of panic and I make a lot of mistakes and I rush through it. I much prefer we just start the video with me coloring the picture. Also, the camera doesn't really catch the sketch very well and I'd hate to start a video off with something that you guys can barely see, so that's why I don't film myself sketching. You can see the lines from where I use the colored pencils, so to even it all out, I'm going to use a Q-tip to blend everything together. You can also use a tissue, a piece of toilet paper, unused of course, a napkin, or even one of those little blender nubs that come in with the graphite pencil kits. Whatever blends everything out nicely will work. I wasn't really happy with how I did the brain. I think doing so many colors for the line art really threw me off when it came to actually coloring it. I tried to fix it by doing heavy reds and pinks, but it didn't come out how I was hoping. I would have preferred a very light and bright pink, but everything in this drawing came out way darker than what I was really going for. Nevertheless, it came out consistent with the rest of the drawing, so there really isn't too much that went wrong.
the burger, I started by laying down a nice gradient for the bun. I wanted to give it that golden shine of a perfectly baked bun coming fresh out of the oven. And man, did I achieve it. I am in love with this Burger Bear. I mean, it is so colorful and it looks so good. I'm just smitten with my own creation. I'm really patting myself on the back here. I will admit, I colored the pumpkin way darker than I should have with the markers. The pumpkin was throwing me off because I wasn't sure how to do the shading and the highlights, and I started overthinking it and went too dark trying to make sense of it. I also wanted his eyes and mouth to have this uh, glow to them, but I wasn't sure how to make that happen. The pumpkin isn't my favorite part of the drawing, but as long as it doesn't distract from everything else, I really don't think it's a fail. I've been wanting to practice coloring transparent things like this lollipop wrapper, for example. This was my very first attempt at drawing something like that, and I would like to try it again with more transparent and maybe some liquidy things would be cool. I never used to color my artwork until recently when I decided to get more serious about pursuing art as a career. When I was learning to draw, I would get scared of potentially ruining my sketch, so I would trace my drawing on another sheet of paper so that I could color it any way without ruining the original sketch. Now, however, 
I go into my drawings with a plan on how I want it colored. Throughout the sketch process, I'm thinking and planning on the colors and if I want it to have colored line art or black line art. I think this mindset can really help you be better prepared for the coloring process. If you are still struggling to find the confidence to color your piece, I suggest that you get a coloring book or print off some coloring pages and practice that way. A big part of coloring traditionally is understanding how your supplies work. Get a blank sheet of paper and see how the colors blend. See what it would look like if you combined pencils and markers like I'm doing here. But what I strongly recommend is just going for it. A sketch doesn't have to be the best thing in the world for you to color it. You don't have to use your nice drawings as the guinea pig. Swatch all of your colors, blend them together, experiment different techniques that you want in your piece. The list goes on. You just need to practice or you'll end up like me as someone who can draw really well but struggles with basic color theory. In other news, I'm wanting to stream on Twitch. I did a little test stream a couple of weeks ago, but I'm using Twitch Mobile, which probably isn't the best way to do it. There were a lot of crazy audio errors that I have absolutely no clue how to fix, so until I know what I'm doing, if I host a live stream event, it will probably be on my Instagram Live, which makes now seem like a good time to plug my Instagram. As always, there will be a link in the description that takes you right to my Instagram. Be sure to follow me there. I will announce before I go live, probably a day before I go live, or a couple of hours before I go live. Maybe I won't go live at all. Who knows? I don't. But stay updated with all things Tootsie Babe by following my Instagram. I'm really happy how everything came out in this drawing. The colors, the composition, I mean, it's so cute, and I'm definitely going to do more with these colors and with these characters. So if you like the video, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I'm going to try to upload at least one video a month this year, so please stay tuned. And I will see all of you in the next one. Bye bye